So this was a Supreme Court case that was just decided. This had to do with uh, the new judge, uh, Neil Gorsuch. Now, to jump back a little bit into Gorsuch, to give a reminder of who he is, what his policies are, this is the judge that was the Supreme Court of the United States that was put up by uh, Trump. He was the guy that was put instead of Garland since the Republicans were like, we don't feel like doing our constitutional duties when Obama was still president. So what's who, who is who is Garland? What's he about? So Gorsuch. His, go, yes, Gorsuch. Thank you. Gorsuch is a uh, individual who was on a another uh, a state Supreme Court previously, and what he's known for is there was a case where a driver was driving a a load of uh, uh, goods in a very cold weather, very very cold weather with uh, snow and wind and everything. His trailer gets stuck on the side of the road. He's told by his um. Uh, his the, dispa- dispatcher, the dispatcher yeah. that he's with to just stay with the truck. You can't leave the goods. But he knows that if he does that, he'll freeze to death. And so he uncouples his uh, trailer from his truck, drives the truck away, uh, goes to a rest station, you know, get fuel, comes back for the load when it's available to do so, uh, when, you know, the conditions clear up. And as a result, he was fired for abandoning his load. So he challenges that in court. The the, the, the local courts say, yeah, you can't fire someone for not willing to freeze to death. Uh, trucking place escalates it. Next place up goes, yeah, you can't fire someone for not being willing to freeze to death. Goes up. And then this level is the one where uh, Gorsuch is at. And of the panel of judges, he's the only one in this entire ring that goes, no, yeah, you should have frozen to death. How dare you tell your employers that you're not going to stay with this load? And, of course, he was in a paddle of other judges who all said, yeah, you can't just tell someone to freeze to death. This is the guy who's now in the Supreme Court. So in this case, he has wrote, written the majority opinion, uh, which says that if you're a worker, you can no longer do a class action lawsuit against an employer for violating you know, worker rights or what have you. One a- area that people – that's in a more relevant, more topical that people can talk about is the Me Too movement. So right now you have, I mean, I, I know it's really new and it's just allegations at this point, but with Morgan Freeman being accused within the production companies that he worked with of being um, of be, uh, sexually assaulting women. So under this case, under how it used to be, these women could, under the same employer, band together, put up a lawsuit, a class action lawsuit or something like that against Morgan Freeman. Now, as this court decision is made, they cannot do that. They have to do it individually. This also applies to workers in general. So if you're at an employer who uh, cuts – which remember, um, what is it called? Um, cor- uh, wage theft from corporations actually takes far more money from Americans than all thefts in the country combined. It's only – in terms of order, it's all thefts committed by private citizens. Larger than that is – uh, police taking money through um, civil forfeiture, and then on top of that, the, by far the largest is corporation is not paying you for overtime, making you clock out early, things of that nature. So before, if you maybe only had a case that's worth two thousand dollars, but everyone had a case that was worth two thousand dollars, if you have a thousand people, well, that's a two million dollar case you're talking about. And if you hire a lawyer or a team of lawyers that can actually defeat. Corporate lawyers, you have to spend, uh, let's say, $300,000 to do that. So that means you spend that 300000 collectively and you get $2 million out of it probably. In this case – and that's worth it because you still would benefit from it and the uh, employer would have to pay for that. Now, if you're an individual, this entirely falls apart because to win that same case that you would get $2,000 for, you have to pay $300,000 to do so. And then if someone else wanted to do it, they would also have to pay $300,000 to get a $2,000 case. So this – takes the idea of worker collectiveness and people being able to band together and taking their limited resources and turning it into something that's valuable and turning it into something that is an individual that can't do it because they don't have the money and the payoff isn't worth it. Guys. Uh, Lauren, why don't you want to add? No, it's like it's the you know repeated story over and over. You know, people that don't have access to those to that kind of funding or they just they don't have um the money in general to be able to pretty much defend themselves. Yeah. You know, it just, it's, it's the same story over and over again. It's a huge win for large companies and it's a massive blow to unions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the main tools in, in the box, right? For unions is the, the ability to threaten to sue as a group. But if you now no longer can sue as a group, you're essentially, essentially defenseless. 
Yeah. And, you know, I want everyone else to remember that, you know, Americans right now, we are struggling. Uh, a lot of working class families are working, you know, two to three jobs, um, trying just to make ends meet. And let's face it, we live in a country to where basically the mentality is work until you're dead, work until you're crippled, work until you can't work anymore. And, you know, there, there's, there's no room for dignity for anyone anymore and because of this uh you know, this action done by the supreme court uh it's going to affect a lot of people and i know there's some people who, who don't think highly of unions but you know we used we used to, depending on the job you have right now we we used to have the weekends off we used to have the ability to you know spend time with our families we used to have uh you know time to just you know the ability just to work one job and that one job can make all the ends meet Nowadays, and, you have to work 50, 60, 70 hours. Yeah, and yeah. even then, that's not enough. And no. I, I want to add into this that we had the uh, dissent from uh, Ginsburg who basically said the way that you're interpreting this because they're basing – the what, what they're basing it off of is this 1925 arbitration law that Gorsuch is basing this off of. And her point is, yeah, but the stuff that's relevant to this was passed way after and it's way more relevant and it's way more – you know, it's like the equivalent of pulling up if you're in, like, um, Montana and you're like, well, if I need to, I can uh, march my cattle down the main road. It, it's like, yeah, that was written in the 1800s. And this is what uh, Gorsuch is uh, basing this off of. So now that we have this uh, split, another thing that's going to happen is that more employers are going to add, which was what actually triggered this lawsuit to begin with, more employers are going to start adding explicit rules that say you can't do – Class action, you must do arbitration, which is what this goes into. So, and arbitration courts are much more favorable to corporations because they don't get repeat business from individuals. They get it from corporations that have this uh, written into their um, uh, clauses. Yeah, and this is uh, the country we live in, to where you know money is speech, and the corporations have you know the ability to do and say whatever they want, and. You know, if this upsets you, if this gets you angry, it doesn't matter what your political affiliation is. Uh, you should, you know, step up now because this is going to affect all of us in the long run until there's, you know, real type of change. And the only way we're going to implement change is number one, if we all get actively involved, if we all step up and keep talking about it. Yeah.